Good morning, good morning. Welcome back. Thank you, Armand. Stop doing that, please. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Happy Monday to you. It's a weird week. Actually, it's a weird couple of weeks. So I'm going to go through one of the things I'm going to talk about is what to expect for this week and next week. Because next week's our last week together. Isn't that insane? This has gone by incredibly slowly and yet in the blink of an eye so fast. So, um, so I'm going to go through expectations for the next two weeks. Um, and I'm also then going to do the demo on the next step for the month project. So first and most excitedly, this Friday is the day we're going to ration the fire. So it also says horsehair fire because that's what my advanced ceramic st students or ceramic st students will also be horsehair firing on that day. But you guys are going to be raccoon firing and we're going to be firing outside on Friday from nine in the morning until five in the afternoon. Now it would be crazy for me to ask you to be there for that entire time. So what I've done on Schoology, and you can go and do this now, in um, today's folder on Schoology, I've created a sign up genius. And I want you to, if you can be here this Friday, I want you to look and sign up for one of the time slots that I've posted there. So you can actually go on your Chromebook or go on your phone now, find that sign up genius and sign up for a time slot. If you can't be here on Friday because of prior engagements, I understand, it's fine. Um, I'm not gonna take any points off if you can't be here, but if you can't be here on Friday, you will have an online assignment that day, probably about Raku firing, and you'll take some sort of quiz on Raku firing so that you understand the process, even though you're not going to be here to be part of it. Now, people who are at home, you also can sign up for a slot, and you also can come and help Raku fire this Friday. Um, the sign up is the same for you. Go on Schoology, uh, look at the four different time slots. I think the first one is 9 to 11, the second one is 11 to 1, um, the next one is 1 to 3, and then the last one is 3 to 5. And the reason I did time slots is I only want about 10 kids here for each time slot, so it's not so many people all at one time. Um, and just so you know, when we raccoon fire, it's going to be done outside. It's supposed to be 57 degrees out, so kind of perfect to be working around the heat that we're going to be having out there. And when we raccoon fire, it's really like 20 minutes of action and then an hour of downtime. Because when the pots are firing out there, there's not much to be done. So uh, you're gonna be called upon to help for that 20 minutes, and then when it's downtime, when the pots are just firing and heating up, you can come back inside here, you can get on a Google Meet for your uh, second hour or your first hour if you signed up for the first shift. Um, or you can work on your assignment, or you can work on extra credit work, or you can just play around on your computer, or you can mess around with play. Because uh, it won't be like go, go, go the entire two-hour shift that you sign up for. So keep that in mind. I want you to sign up for your shift if you can be here on Friday so that I know that I have somebody here for at least uh, at least a, a couple of people for each of those shifts because it's too much for me to do. It's really a, a lot of work, and so it takes a lot of hands to help out with that. Now, if you're not here on Friday, but yet you fired your Raku thing and you want your Raku thing fired, I'm going to prioritize firing the work of people who are here because then when you're here, if I know that you're here from say one to three, I'm going to do my best to make sure that your piece get fired from one to three. So you can be a part of the process of having it come out of the kiln and all the rainbow metallic special effects happening to it. If you're not here, I can't promise you that your work is going to get fired. It'll get saved to the very, very end. And if by five o'clock we're not done, we'll, we just have to be done because I can't stay later than five o'clock. So um, it really, really would be advantageous for you not only to be here to participate in like doing your own piece, but also just to participate in the process. It is a really fun pyrotechnic process, um, a nice day to be, you know, kind of laid back here at school. So um, sign up for a shift, uh, take a look at the shifts that are, that are available. My advanced students have already signed up, um, but there are tons of slots still available. Um, and if you come, like say you are here for the um, 9 to 11 o'clock shift and you want to stay longer absolutely you can totally do that that's great I just want to make sure that each shift is at least having a few people in it so the, the work can get done so um, just so you are aware this is what uh, it looks like on Schoology 
So um, in the Monday, April 12th folder, you're going to click on the sign up for Raku firing. Then you'll get this page, and you'll have to click on that title again, sign up for Raku. And then it'll take you to this page, the Raku and horse hair. So um, sign up. It'll ask you for your name and your email. You don't have to type any comments. And um, I'll be looking at that by the end of the day and hopefully seeing that each slot has some names in it. All right, um, so this is our schedule for this week. I want you guys to pay attention so that you have this. Um, if you're signing up, that's fine. But when you're done signing up, look up here. Um, so today, I'm going to do the demo on, uh, on making a pole handle. This is a required part of your mug project. And if you haven't made the body of your mug yet, okay, you are going to get work time today, too. But some people are ready to learn about the handle, so I'm going to show that to everybody, including those of you at home. Tomorrow is an ACT day. So only juniors will be here tomorrow and nobody has class tomorrow. There's no Google Meet tomorrow. There will be an, an attendance question and some sort of little assignment that I will create and I'll figure out what that is. Um, so just make sure you log in and answer the attendance question and then see what I've posted for your assignment if you're not here tomorrow. Juniors, I believe that you're exempt from any assignments tomorrow because of the ACT. Wednesday, you're going to have work time. Thursday is the day this mug project is due. Friday, we wrap food and horse hair fire. Saturday, I don't know if you're aware, but it's promo. Uh, that is happening. So just thought I'd throw that out there as a reminder. Um, next week is finals week. And so Monday, I've decided that your last project, instead of a teapot, your last project is going to be a free choice project, which can be whatever you want. So if you really want to make a teapot, you can make a teapot. Um, but if you want to make some other type of project, uh, an animal or another mug or a plate or you know, whatever you want to make, um, I'm going to I'll give you three days to work on your free choice project. And all that I'll do is I'll just want to check in with each one of you. And I want you to tell me kind of what you're thinking you might want to make, how you want to make it. because You can make it any way that you want. Um, and that includes the people at home, too. Your last project is a free choice project. Uh, Thursday is our actual final. It's our last day of class. You'll be glazing. In fact, you'll be probably glazing some of these other days as well. Um, but Thursday is a definitely a day for glazing. And then we'll do some cleaning. And the cleaning will be your final. People at home, same. You're going to clean up your home workspace and you have to bring back your swag bag next um, Thursday or Friday because I'll be here Friday. And then that's your final. Okay. And you guys don't, there will be no Flex Friday next Friday. Okay, and there'll be no Flex Friday this Friday either, just, just for my class, though. Uh, for your other teachers, I'm sure they'll still have something for you to do. Any questions on this strange schedule that we have for the next two weeks? Okay, great. So then, just a reminder, what we've been working on, we've been doing a mug that has, uh, that has been built out of slabs. Most of us have been doing a mug built out of slabs. A few people have decided to do it on the wheel. Um, if you want to make your mug on the wheel, I would say today is your last day to make that body of the mug on the wheel. And if you don't get something on the wheel today, then on Wednesday, which is your next day back here, make it out of slabs. All right. So today is kind of the last day to mess around and see if the wheel gives you anything. Um, so part of the thing to think about if you're working with slabs is are you making a wide lipped mug? Are you making a wide bottomed mug? Or are you making an hourglass mug? In which case, you're taking your piece, your template, your cut up cup, and you're tracing it twice to make two um, cylindrical components that are put together. So your steps for today are to check the state of the mug that you made. What stage is it in? Is it leather hard? Hopefully. Um, if it's still plastic, that's OK. We'll just put it in front of the fan for a little bit. If it's bone dry, that's a problem. So hopefully nobody's going to find that they're, they're working bone dry. If you haven't done this yet, finish melding all the seams, and then you're going to start scraping and shaping using either a steel scraper if you're here, or a plastic card if you're at home. Uh, you're going to work on fixing the walls, work on fixing the lip, because probably when you first started constructing it last week, it's probably a little bit wonky. So we're going to fix that wonkiness today. If you made the body of your mug on the wheel, you're going to have to trim a foot on that wheel thrown mug. and. I'll have a refresher demo on how to do that today, just for the people who are interested in working on the wheel, okay? If you are hand building your mug, I'm, this is gonna be one of the only projects where I exempt you from a foot. So if you're hand building it, 
I'm not going to make you put anything on the bottom. I am, however, we're going to make you fix things like that, like where the, that crease is there. You'll work on smoothing it and um, getting that out of there. And you certainly can add a foot if you're hand building, if you're doing a slab, but it's not going to be required for this project. Um, what is going to be required is making a pulled handle. So I'm going to show you that in class today, how to make a pulled handle. This is the professional way to make a handle. Once you try it and, and see, it's, it's more hard, it's more difficult than it looks. Um, but it, once you get good at it, once you practice it a bunch, it's a way to really quickly make a lot of handles that all look alike. So this is what a lot of professional potters use to make multiple handles very quickly. So you'll see the process. You will have to practice it. Um, the first try type of handle you make might not work. You might have to make a second or a third before it actually works, and that's okay. That's part of the process. Uh, once you've made your handle, and again, I'm going to show you that in a moment, you're going to allow it to get leather hard in an arched shape, and then you're going to cut and keep the best portion of it, and that's what's going to get spores left and melted to your mug, and that's what you're going to take a photo of today. So ideally, everybody gets their mug body complete today and a handle put on today. If you're a wheeler and you've thrown a pot today and, and that's as far as you get and you don't get a handle on there today, that's fine. Just take a photo of that and that can be your progress for today. You can make your handle on uh, Wednesday. So I am going to lock this up on the screen. I'm going to have you guys come around table nine, please, for the demo. And I'm going to stop sharing. Turn on this thing. Oh, did we just do that? There we go. Okay. All right. So, can you guys see okay? Okay. All right. So, this was the mug body that I made last Thursday. And when I opened it up, it actually was too soft. It was still kind of more plastic than it was leather hard which is okay, it's a great problem to have. Way better for it to be too wet than too dry because it's easier to just let this sit out in the open air and dry out. So what I've been using my time as, as I've kind of been waiting for this to firm up, I've been using my little plastic card. Those of you here, you can use a steel scraper. I've been supporting the inside with my hands and I've been using this plastic card to do some scraping and shaping to just kind of perfect the form because the form was not very good. And honestly, it's still not very good. It's higher on one side than the other. One thing I tried, and this is really probably only safe to do when your clay is leather hard. I tried rolling it on the table to try and even it out a little bit. And that helped a little. I did to make sure my table was clean so it wasn't picking up little boogers of clay. Um, but the scraping and shaping really helps. So just, if you just put a little bend in your steel scraper or plastic card, and use that to scrape and shape, that'll be really great. Um, the lip is pretty terrible on this. So I don't know if you can see that at home, it's a little higher on one side. So I would also, I could use my steel scraper or plastic card to scrape those high spots. It's kind of risky to gouge at it. So it's probably better if I scrape at it this way. And then it was thicker on this side too. So I've been working on just slowly scraping away that thickness over here. So this, this scraping and shaping, is probably gonna take a while. Um, honestly, it's not a quick thing. You'll probably be scraping and turning and scraping and turning, probably for maybe eight to 10 minutes, just to really perfect that form and get it as good as you can. Now, people who are here in person, sorry, people at home, um, I do have these tools, these scraping tools, which are really great for doing the, the lip. So maybe at home, maybe you have something like this, because this isn't technically a clay tool. This is a, a drywall rasp that people use in construction to, um, to clean up uh, plaster that's in drywall or that sticks out of drywall. So you might have something like this at home, but ask permission before you use it. This is a great tool for leveling lips. So um, that still a little higher on this side. So I'm gonna scrape that side a little bit more. It's easy to go too far too fast. So make sure that you check it um, frequently in between passes. So notice I haven't done any smoothing with a sponge yet. I really want to get all the, the scraping done while the clay is still firm. I don't want to add too much like rehydration to it just to make sure that I'm not going to weaken it at all. So the first hydration that I'm probably going to do is with a paintbrush on the inside just to make sure that that part that I melded is really nice and neat. And then I could take a sponge and start smoothing up the outside, including this bottom bit that for whatever reason, I don't know why that gash is there, um, but I want to fill that in too. 
because the bottom, if I'm not making you put a foot on there, then that bottom better look pretty darn nice. So, um, so that when I flip it over, if I don't see a foot, I at least see a smooth face. Okay, then I'm gonna smooth up and around this whole thing because I've done all my scraping and shaping. Smooth that lip. That lip is the most important part of your pot. If there's areas that are too thick or too thin, you fix those areas. You fill in those areas that are too thin or you scrape away those areas that are too thick. Even if the rest of your walls are totally uneven, as long as the lip looks even, that's kind of what I care about, right? Because that's gonna give the impression that everything else is even. So this is still a little thicker on this side here. I'm, I would probably take a little bit more time to scrape it, but I'm not gonna do that in front of you because I think you get the, the, the gist of it at, the, at this point. So I'm gonna let this kind of air dry a little bit because I just rehydrated it and I'm gonna take you guys over to the sink. So gather as close as you can around the sink. Come along VLA students. It's a little field trip today over to the sink. Okay, are you gonna be able to see me from there? Sure, okay. So the reason I'm over here at the sink is when you pull your handle, you're gonna need to be at a sink. People who are at home, this is gonna be risky for you because I don't want you to get clay in your sink at home. So what you're gonna do instead, find a bucket, you know, like, like a glazed bucket, like that kind of size, or even just a little bowl and put water in it and do this at your table. Uh, Cause I don't want you to get clay in your sink at home. Your parents would be very mad at me. So I'm gonna grab some clay. Um, I have a special bag of clay that's just for pulling handles over here. So if you need like clay to be on the wheel or if you need clay to make your slab, Grab it from the silver bit. This clay is only for pulling out. Okay, and the reason that is, is because this clay is clay that's straight from the factory. And people at home, you have clay that's straight from the factory, and it's much more consistent. So it'll make a better handle. So this clay, only for pulling handles. So I've got about a tennis ball sized amount of clay. I'm going to put it in my hands, and I'm going to put my hands in a V shape so I get a pointy ice cream cone. Right? Is this a cake cone, sugar cone? What's the pointy one? Sugar cone, right. So I make a sugar cone out of my clay. So I'm gonna hang on to the fat part of the sugar cone. I'm gonna have some warm water running. Um, maybe just like a little trickle so that we're not wasting a ton of water. And using this part between my, my um, index finger and my thumb, I'm gonna make an O. And I'm gonna pull down on this clay and I'm gonna make that O smaller as I pull down on the clay. I don't know if anyone here has ever milked a cow, but it's the same motion you would do if you're milking a cow. So you're pulling down on the clay with that O shape getting smaller and smaller as you pull down, okay? And you need water running because you don't want friction to build up between your hands and the clay, so you constantly need to be getting your hands wet. So I'm going to start with that O shape up near the top of the cone and then I'm gently pulling down on the clay to stretch it little by little. And if a little bit breaks off, like if you pinch at it too hard, just recycle that. I'm setting it here for now, but I'll recycle that in a little bit. So with my other hand that's hanging on to the ice cream cone, I'm just turning it as I am doing the pulled handle motion so that the marks of my finger aren't going to happen always in the same spot. Okay, so now that's pretty thin, that's pretty long. Notice I still have a really big amount of clay up here. If this were to all break, you just bring down more clay from that top part. That's why you start with so much clay up there. Then you're gonna want a tray handy. You're gonna put the fat part of the coil or the, the fat part of the ice cream cone stuck down under the tray. Let it sit arched like this, because a handle should be like half a heart shape. So you want it arched uh, like that. Hair dry it, put it in front of the fan. Um, do whatever you need to get this leather hard and then okay come back over to table nine because this is a cooking show right we got to have one that's ready to go so here's my leather hard handle that I made uh, about 20 minutes ago so I'm gonna take, uh, if you're here, you're gonna take a steel scraper. If you're at home, you're gonna take your plastic card. And um, with that leather hard handle, you're gonna cut straight down to disconnect it. Cause we don't wanna use this big lump here. That's of no use to us. So I just cut straight down. And now I'm going to 
bend it a little bit more so I get that nice half of a heart shape. Down here, I can decide what I want to do with it. Do I want to curl it up and make it actually be part of my handle? Otherwise, I'm just going to cut that too. So what we want, ideally, oh, I should hold it so people at home can see. We want this and this to be on the same plane. So see how this cut and this cut are the same flat plane. So now, ooh, it would be good if I had a towel. I'm gonna take my mug body that I just was working on. It's a little bit soft yet, but um, I'm just gonna lay it on its side here so it's cushioned. And then I'm gonna take this handle and I'm gonna decide where is it gonna go? Is it gonna go high? Is it gonna go low? Is it gonna be, well, upside down wouldn't work very well. Um, uh, this handle that I mentioned to you is like half of a heart. And the reason it's like that is it's more comfortable to sit in your hand if it's arched up like that. So you wanna think about how many fingers do you wanna fit inside there? Do you wanna just have it be for one finger? Ooh, that's fine. Um, this handle I think is meant to fit all four uh, fingers, but um, it's really cramped. It doesn't have enough height here and it almost has too much width here. So um, just kind of keep think about that as you're deciding how much of your handle to cut and keep. Um, so this looks like it's gonna be maybe a two, two finger handle and that's fine. So I'm gonna take my toothpick and I'm gonna mark where this handle connects. Keep in mind, this is a leather hard handle. My, the one that I just made is way too soft for what I'm doing. It wouldn't hold its shape. So then I'm gonna score those two areas where I marked where the handle is gonna go. I'm gonna score the handle itself because the handle really has to be strong. You don't wanna be drinking your coffee and the handle lets go and the hot coffee falls in your lap. So you really do wanna make sure that you've scored and slipped those two connection points really well. And so then I'm gonna put a little bit of firm pressure to bring those two areas together. And then I'm gonna take some additional clay, I'm gonna roll a tiny coil just in the palm of my hand. And I'm gonna put that tiny coil around where the top piece connects. And I'm gonna put a coil around where the bottom piece connects. And then, oh, broken. I'm gonna use the spoon side of my wood knife, or if you're at home, I'm gonna use a popsicle stick to blend in that additional coil. Cause this handle needs to be strong, strongly attached and the handle should get wider as it attaches to the body of the pot. So by wrapping this little coil of clay around the connection point, it's also gonna make it wider, stronger and wider. So once I finish my melding, I would do a little bit of smoothing around that point. I would take my photo for today. And that's as far as we're going for today. And since we don't have school tomorrow, um, I don't really want you to wrap a wet paper towel on this. I don't wanna overhydrate it. So just seal it up tightly in a bag and that should be perfectly fine. Okay, so there's my handle scored, slipped, and melded. And I purposely put it on the side of my mug where the lip was too, too thin to kind of hide the fact that the lip was too thin there, but I'm still gonna have to keep scraping on this other side too to, to even that out a little bit. So that's your process for today. Finish up the body of your mug, um, make your pulled handle, and see if you can get it to the point where you can get it attached today. Okay, any questions you guys who are here in person have for me before I go talk to the at-home kids? Okay, I'll be back to help you guys in a few minutes. People who are at home, stay put. I'm gonna check in with you now. All right, here we go. I'm gonna stop recording.